groups, especially if it's just a registration issue, um, they'll back off completely, especially when you're swerving in and out of traffic. And that's when you really start wondering how this is going to end, and you really start to have a lot of concern about not only the occupants, we understand that's children, and that's such a, sen a sensitive issue, uh, but also the other people on the freeway, and now you can tell the driver is getting more erratic. We're on the 605 South. We're headed down towards the 91 freeway here in a moment, so we're into Cerritos. If we continue south, we'll be down through Long Beach and uh, down into the Seal Beach area. the 91. Yeah, it looks like depending on if he stays in the right lane or the, the, the suspect here, we're going to the place that they're headed. You know, a lot of, a lot of times they will uh, head to an area that they are familiar with. Um, you wonder what must be going through their minds uh, with two kids on board at speeds this high. And now on the 91 freeway, we're headed into the Long Beach area. Um, it, it's hard to say where they may continue on to. And, and we always speculate if they may be heading to a spot that they're familiar with, maybe home. We've seen that in several cases. Yeah, there's so many things that could go wrong, especially at this high rate of speed. Um, you know, somebody who doesn't see that vehicle and makes a turn in front of them, uh, we've seen that. And, uh, you know, look at that there, getting right up behind that car and then uh, passing. Uh, we're seeing uh, above 80 miles an hour, probably close to 90 there. And the regular traffic obviously is doing about 20 miles an hour less than that. There's not much in the way of delays up ahead. Of course, if you stay on the 91 freeway, that ends at the 110. And we'll just have to follow along and see... Uh, uh, how this uh, eventually ends here. They have not gone into surveillance mode. And you know, as you follow these pursuits, it's interesting, uh, depending on the authority and uh, who's uh, in charge of the pursuit, whether they go into that surveillance mode or not. We've got a CHP helicopter overhead. We've got LA County uh, Sheriff's Department helicopter overhead. And then we have the uh, CHP patrol cars who are in charge of this uh, down on the freeway there. Uh, at this point, they have not backed off. You can see the patrol cars are still behind this vehicle. Uh, so it, it's really tough sometimes to get inside the, uh, the police officers' heads uh, and see what their strategy is. But it hasn't been to back off yet, which is a little interesting considering there are children on board, or at least we have that report. Oh boy, look at that. Well, the reason they go into surveillance mode is they have the helicopter overhead and they feel that if they drop back and they don't follow behind this vehicle with the patrol cars, it's gonna drive uh, at, at not such a high rate of speed and it's not gonna try and avoid the officers on the ground. Um, sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't, but you're not gonna know if it works unless you go into surveillance mode and you follow it from the air, then all of a sudden this vehicle slows down to the speed limit. You're not so concerned about the occupants and about the people on the freeway. So it looks like um, from time to time that is the reasoning they will use, and uh, they haven't gone to that yet. But once again, um, we can speculate all we want. We don't know what the police officers know, so we don't want to second guess what they're doing. Uh, I'm not saying it to state that um uh, because they may know a lot more than we do but they have backed off quite a bit now if you open up jamie um we'll get rid of sky map seven there with all the freeways no he's not and that that's part of it as well uh, they have backed off but the, the vehicle is still keeping that same uh speed uh that same rate and now the patrol cars are catching up once again uh but they're not right on that suv's tail they backed off a bit there's two helicopters overhead so they're not going to get away uh, and they may have, before we got on this field, they may have went to surveillance mode. And then they may have noticed from the helicopters that uh, this individual is driving just as erratically, even more erratically, because he couldn't see the officer, thinking he was getting away or she was getting away. We just don't know yet. And maybe that is why they stayed with this. So there's a lot of, a lot of unknowns here. And, boy, there's a, a right turn very quickly. I think there's going to be Long Beach Boulevard, if I'm not mistaken, um, actually Alameda, actually. 
and uh, this is can, where it can get very dicey very quickly. A vehicle traveling this rate of speed with a high center of gravity, an SUV like that, uh, coming off onto this off-ramp, and uh, we can only hope they slow down and take it easy here. Uh, they're going to come up onto the Alameda Street here in just a moment and make a turn either north or southbound. No oh boy, look at that. Yeah, through a red light. Yeah. Uh, we're on Alameda. We're coming up on, uh, looks like, uh, Victoria Street. So we're headed southbound. We're in the Long Beach area. We've seen uh, the individual run through one red light. Uh, and right now what's happening is the CHP is still behind them, but they're going to hand this off probably to Long Beach Police here in a moment or to the Sheriff's Department. And the call is going out to all the other units in this area to try and get them uh, in, an, in a spot where they can sort of uh, get on top of this, get a better look of exactly who is on board uh, the vehicle. If there really are children, that is a report. We believe that to be true. And look at this high rate of speed right here. Boy, look at this. Now, that, that's close. That was running through a red light there. You see the uh, just... Um, uh, merging with traffic there, I believe now on, South, on Santa Fe and off of Alameda. Uh, but we will see more and more patrol cars on the surface streets here. At this rate of speed, a spike strip is probably not going to work. Um, I, I wouldn't see it in this area, in this such a confined area here, at such a high rate of speed. Uh, but the patrol cars have backed off quite a bit. It's a pretty high rate, up to 70, 75 miles an hour on a surface street like this. Yeah, no, it really gets dangerous when we see it on the surface streets like this. Um, you know, one car pulls out and you've got what could be very easily a deadly accident. What happens with our sky map, if we get too far of an angle, we had to back off for a moment because the uh, patrol car, the uh, helicopters overhead, uh, were making us back off for just a moment in the Long Beach's airspace. Uh, but then the angle is such that we don't get an extremely accurate speed. But as we get a little closer, we will. And that is an accurate speed. We can tell by our angle. And we're talking about 100 miles an hour. You can see that as it loses some of its information crossing under a freeway, it'll change from time to time. But this is a high rate of speed, and right now they have backed off. So once this got onto the Long Beach streets, they're canceling the ground units, at least for now. The two helicopters are following overhead, and I think what their hope is, Long Beach has probably taken over now because it's in their jurisdiction. It'll go into the Sheriff's Department jurisdiction here pretty soon if it continues south. And I think what their uh, feeling is, their strategy right now is just follow it with a helicopter, and hopefully the suspect will slow down, and it won't be such a danger not only to the driver and to the possible kids on board, uh, but to citizens uh, in the area. Now, we're coming up southbound on Alameda. Uh, I think this might be PCH. I'm not certain. We'll find out in a moment. But uh, there's going to be stop traffic here, I believe, and this could get a little dicey. Uh, the light did just turn green, so the suspect was able to get through. But... Uh, those are some uh, squeezing by in some uh, pretty uh, tight conditions there past some of the s trucks that we'll see head down uh, towards the harbor area. Red light here, right through it. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. And one person pulls out from, uh, you know, an intersection there and doesn't see that vehicle. And 
and we could have an extremely bad crash. We've seen it happen too many times, people killed. Now the vehicle has slowed a little bit. We're getting down into the harbor area, down towards the Long Beach Harbor. If we continue here on Alameda, maybe even into San Pedro. Uh, so it'll be interesting. Um, at least we're not in a residential area, but there's a, a pretty fast passing of that vehicle. And we're running into an area here where if you continue south, uh, we'll head down into San Pedro, and it may be a little bit trickier for the suspect to continue uh, on some of these uh, smaller surface streets, and it may be a little easier uh, for the uh, law enforcement to get a handle on them. So we've seen the individual turn here um, onto, it looks like, uh, East 1st Street, and this will be Long Beach's area. So the helicopter overhead will start to get out the location. And if the suspect's going slow enough, it looks like LAPD Harbor now is going to take over. Uh, they could try a pit maneuver, but the vehicle would have to be down below 40 miles an hour and uh, on some of these surface streets. So uh, this is an industrial area. You don't have a, peop a lot of people walking around, fortunately, but still uh, potential uh, for injury and somebody getting hurt here. But the vehicle is really slowed. And now we're coming up to an area that if they get the patrol cars in, they really could be able to uh, maybe get this individual stopped. And it looks like they have stopped the vehicle. Now they're backing up. I don't see a patrol car behind them. So that's, uh, that's good as far as just getting into a situation where there would be a standoff. Uh, but they will want to stop it. And since the, uh, since the law enforcement did back off with the patrol cars, they are content at this point to just follow it with a helicopter overhead. And at least the suspect's not driving as erratically or such a high rate of speed as what we saw earlier. Yeah, that certainly is. You know, we, we really get scared when we see that kind of driving in a residential neighborhood, especially, you know, so many kids are at home. They're out playing in the yard. Uh, this is more of an industrial area here in Wilmington. Uh, we go a little further west. We'll be in San Pedro. But I think the good thing about this, Philip, is that the uh, suspect is really slowed down. We're not seeing what we saw up to 100 miles an hour on the freeway. Um, and it'll be interesting. A lot of times uh, we, we wonder if they know where they're going. And then at some point, maybe the suspect will uh, make a run for it. But considering there's two kids on board, you start to wonder what the relationship might be, like you asked. Um, I'm assuming they don't think they're kidnapped because I don't think the, they would back off if that was the case. I'm assuming more than likely because they went to this mode of just setting back and watching surveillance. Uh, they don't feel there's an immediate danger to the children. So maybe they know now that uh, it's a mother or a father. Uh, maybe they don't speak good English or maybe they're just scared and they're trying to talk to someone uh, in the family or calling their cell phone. They're trying to do a lot of things to try and get this to conclude without anybody get hurt, getting hurt. Uh, that's definitely their plan. That's their strategy. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. I, I don't see one out my window for, you know, five or six blocks for what I can see for a mile. I don't see patrol cars in the intersections up ahead. Um, I really have a feeling now that the uh, individual, the suspect, has slowed their driving. It's not as erratic. They're driving closer to the speed limit. They're obeying the traffic laws. They're not running red lights. Uh, they're not, you know, going the wrong direction uh, in opposite direction traffic. Uh, I think because of that, they're going to be content to just follow along from the air. This individual will stop eventually. 
And even sometimes if they get enough information on the individual, they'll even back off with the helicopters and they'll figure we'll get you later. Um, they're certainly going to, but I think what we really uh, are seeing right now is, is a great turn from what was an extremely dangerous pursuit at up to 100 miles an hour on the freeway uh, to a, a pace now that is, uh, is safe, I would say, for the, the community. We're not seeing this individual drive too erratically, but what we have seen in the past is that change so quickly, just like a light switch. We'll see somebody drive like this, and then all of a sudden just gun it and try to get that car going as fast as they can and then make a run for it, not knowing if the patrol cars are still right behind them. They can't see them, but you never really have an idea what a suspect's going to do, and that what makes these uh, pursuits so challenging. Yeah. Well, Yep, they're on the 110 now. This is going to be the 110 freeway southbound. And if you're familiar with this area, the 110 ends down in the, the San Pedro area. So uh, on to the Harbor Freeway southbound now. And I don't think CHP will take over because there's not a long stretch of the 110 here for this vehicle to really go uh, before they're going to be forced to back off the freeways. So uh, we will see. Uh, but we are southbound on the 110 freeway headed down into San Pedro. Yeah, more than likely tags. That's the only real registration vehicle, uh, you know, uh, infraction you can see from a patrol car. You pull up on the vehicle and maybe it didn't have the, the right month or the right year on the tags. They went to pull it over and then we had this pursuit. Um, they got off the 110 freeway and what we're going to do is cross over the Vincent Thomas Bridge here in a moment. We're headed back to the uh, east, back towards the Long Beach area. And um, law enforcement is backed off completely on the ground. I don't see one vehicle following along. They have two helicopters overhead, a CHP helicopter and a LA County Sheriff. Uh, but fortunately, the speeds right now are just basically the uh, speeds of the freeway here, the roadway. This is the uh, Vincent Thomas Bridge once again. Uh, and, and that is nice to see. But there's a lot we don't know. We just hope these things end without incident as we follow them, especially when you get a report that kids are on board. I mean, that's so disheartening. So hopefully the individual just gives up. I can look out and uh, over the Vincent Thomas Bridge here in just a moment, which is pretty incredible, and then be headed uh, out towards Long Beach. There are going to be no delays. There's not going to be any uh, traffic uh, issues from what I can tell from here into uh, basically runs right into downtown Long Beach.
Um, it did. That's the other. That's the other bridge, and it just was slipping my mind, the name of it, uh, the cable bridge that they just put up. So somebody will hit me with that. Uh, the, De the Gerald Desmond, that's right. Thank you. Um, and that one is spectacular. They just redid that. Um, and basically, once you go over the Vincent Thomas and San Pedro, you continue uh, out towards the uh, east, towards Long Beach, and then you're going to go over the uh, Gerald Desmond. So unless the individual gets off, and there is a little bit of traffic tie-up here at the signal light coming up, uh, but because there are no patrol cars behind the suspect, I doubt we'll get a situation where um, we're going to see uh, them try and swerve in and out of traffic. Uh, they've been you know, obeying the, the, the traffic laws for the most part at this point. Um, if they get off of this um, roadway, though, then you just get into the harbor area. And in an industrial area, they probably get into a situation where they would get pinned. There's a patrol car there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's going to get interesting here, too, because they just saw a patrol car there in the, the uh, center median a moment ago. And we're going to head into Long Beach. So LAPD Harbor Division will probably hand this over to Long Beach PD at some point. And what's interesting when you follow these pursuits is that different agencies just have different strategies and procedures. So we'll see if that changes. Also, if they continue over the Gerald Desmond, which you're going to see in a moment, and it is spectacular. That's quite a bridge. Uh, you get right down into downtown Long Beach. You have a chance to get on the 710. But if you pass that and you head down towards Ocean, you're right into the heart of Long Beach. And uh, Long Beach PD would take over at that point in time, and we just have to see what their strategy is. Uh, but I think right now they're pretty content with what they see. This vehicle doesn't appear to be causing much of a threat at this point. Certainly it was er uh, earlier. I'll get Jamie to see if we're on the doubler here, and uh, that's as tight as we can get. The windows in the back are, uh, you know, obviously uh, blacked out. Partially down. Yeah, you have to always yeah you have to always remember there's a report that there are children on board. Um, so, you know we don't know that for sure. You know we don't know if an officer saw that and then it got out that hey there are kids on board. We don't know if maybe they got communication with somebody else where that vehicle left or somebody who owns the vehicle or knows who's driving and said hey the kids may be on board with him or her. So. Boy, that's one of the reasons, you know, they don't like your windows blacked out, especially the front windows. They're not going to allow that because officers do want to see in, especially when they approach a vehicle. Um, that and it, it does distort what you can see outside the car if you have the, the right uh, front windows tinted. Um, but at this point, you know, we just have a report of that. We hope that's not the case. But certainly they are taking the approach on this as if that was the case. Uh, but we're not able to see inside because those win uh, windows are tinted so dark. No, so I think the surveillance mode helped. You know, once they backed off with the patrol cars, it seems like the driver came to their senses a little bit as far as the speeds that they were uh, traveling at. We're on the 710 northbound. So we left, uh, once we went over the uh, uh, Gerald Desmond Bridge, we got on the northbound side of the 710. We're headed out of downtown Long Beach. And this if this could go back up towards the 91. We were on the 91 there for a while. So um, we've seen that in a lot of cases in the past, too. The suspect will go around in circles. They'll look a little confused, like the suspect did when they got off of the 110 freeway there for a moment, went through the gas station, turned around. Looked like they were almost trying to find another on-ramp to a freeway. 
and uh, it, it looks like, uh, yeah, it looks like we're continuing northbound on the 710. And it also appears now that CHP has taken over. Yeah, but look, CHP has taken over. Open up a little bit, Jamie. And we'll see what happens here. Now, it's, I mentioned that about different jurisdictions. Uh, they follow along and they have different um, procedures. And now you can see, uh, I think that's CHP, if I'm not mistaken, it appears to be. They are now, uh, once this got onto a freeway, they're behind the vehicle and their strategy at this point is to keep that vehicle in sight. So we'll see if that changes the demeanor of the driver um, as we go forward here. Yeah, absolutely, and they work together really well. Like LAPD works with LA County Sheriffs, and the CHP helicopters work with um, uh, both the other departments. So they have two overhead right now because it's in and out of so many different jurisdictions. Uh, it came out of the Inland Empire, out of Beaumont, so more than likely it was almost all CHP on the freeways. Uh, it got into the LA area, and you got some other uh, helicopters from law enforcement overhead. And yeah, of course, you know, they have fuel concerns. Once one guy gets low, LA County Sheriffs will just send out another one to replace them. They've got you know, I don't know how many dozens of helicopters. So they've got plenty of uh, equipment to make sure they can follow along. And at this point, it's um, the uh, sheriff's department that is overhead with a helicopter, and it is the CHP. Well, the ground units are still following. I see them, even though there was a report that they backed off. That did not seem to be accurate. Uh, but they're not nearly as close. Pull out real quick, Jamie, just so we can see them. They were for a moment when we just got on the 710 North, and uh, they're probably about a half a mile behind now. You can push back into the vehicle. I just want to uh, sort of give you an, an idea, perspective of how far behind they were. Um, but they're not right behind the vehicle like we saw earlier, and the vehicle's not traveling as erratically as it was before. So. Uh, we can only hope that's the case, although all of a sudden now we see a turn. And we're coming up on the 91 freeway, so if the suspect wants to get back on the same freeway they were on earlier and maybe head back towards the 605, they'd have a chance to do that here. Um, this right lane transitions to either the 91 east or westbound. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think so. We're on the, the 710 northbound. This is the 91 freeway interchange. If you took it, uh, you took the 91, you could go to the 110 and into the 405, unless I got lost. Uh, this actually is the 405, excuse me. So we, we took the 710 north up towards the 405, so that's what we're at now. The next freeway would have been the 91, and it looks like now the suspect is getting on to the um, 405 freeway, and I believe they're going to be heading... Um, to the northbound side, and that is correct. We'll be on the 405 North. All the way in on the doubler. Camouflage top. Yep, right over a center median there, it looked like on the 405 freeway northbound, just getting out of that right lane and getting into the center lane uh, before they were trapped on a collector road that was going to take him off. Interesting, he has a mask on. Now, that could be an indicator that he does have kids in the back, that, you know, if it's a parent, they might be wearing a mask just to make certain that they're not going to spread the coronavirus um, or that, you know, that there's other people inside the vehicle. You just put the window up. It would be um, somewhat interesting for the suspect to be wearing the mask if they're in the car all by themselves. Um, certainly that happens, but um, there would be no need for that. I don't know that that tells us anything, but we're on the 405 North. It looks like CHP is backed off. Uh, we're heading up. Um, we will head back up towards the 110 freeway if we continue northbound. And the speeds here, I'll bring up SkyMap 7. I mean, we're still quite a bit above the speed limit. You know, traffic uh, is probably moving around 70 miles an hour today 
for the most part, uh, maybe 75 because volume's light. I know it's a little above the speed limit, but usually the volume, uh, when it's light, you'll see uh, vehicles travel at a little faster rate, but we're still seeing a pretty good clip, um, you know, up to 85 miles an hour here on the 405 freeway. There's just not a lot of traffic today because it's Veterans Day, there's not a lot of volume. And so we haven't seen this vehicle get into one of those really dicey situations where the freeway shut down, the patrol cars are behind them, and they got to try and make those desperate moves to get away. Uh, that's when things really start to get dangerous. So we haven't seen that, but boy, we certainly have seen excessive speeds up to right up to 100 miles an hour, and that, uh, that can be deadly. Yeah, there's some irony there. Yeah, there's some irony there. And, you know, you just can't ever get into the head of a suspect. I mean, they're in a situation where they're trying to get away from police. And, uh, you know, I mean, a lot of times it's just a mental illness issue. Um, we just don't know. And, um, you know, that could explain a lot, right, as far as why they'd be wearing a mask uh, to protect others and then getting out on the freeway and and putting everybody at risk. But um, there's a lot we don't know. Uh, more than likely, law enforcement has a real good idea what they're dealing with. And that's why they've gone to surveillance mode. We're on the 405 northbound. We're going to be coming up uh, here on the uh, 110 freeway here in just a moment. Yeah, that's a Lincoln Navigator. That's a big vehicle, and it does not get good gas mileage. I mean, maybe 15 to 17 miles per gallon. I think that's uh, about the range. I had a friend who owned one, so that's uh, I got an idea. And uh, they're not going to get good gas mileage, that's for sure. But um, if it was full, you know, this could go on for three hours. So um, it's hard to say. I think what's encouraging, though, is that uh, the driver's not driving that erratic. Uh, we do not see uh, CHP right behind him at this point in time, so they're they're not uh, really um, influencing his driving at all, and he won't lose the helicopters. Um, and the, the, the suspect looked rather calm, um, you know, as you mentioned. We've seen a lot of these where, you know, you could tell drugs or alcohol was involved just by the demeanor of the driver when we got tight on that individual. Um, he seemed to be rather calm. Uh, the speeds are much slower than they were before, and that's, that's good. Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, if there are children on board the vehicle and that individual is with those children, they're his children or his friends, kids, or whatever that may be, they're probably gonna, not going to make a run for it. Like, a lot of times, uh, we'll see somebody just stop real quick, and they'll foot bail. They'll just start to, to run away from the vehicle. Uh, there's going to be a connection between this driver and those kids of some sort, um, we believe, just from following these in the past, um, from history's sake. Uh, if they thought there was any foul play with those kids, they'd be right on top of this. Um, so when this comes to an end, more than likely this individual will either just give himself up. We hope that is the case. The vehicle runs out of gas. He gets into a neighborhood where they can put out a spike strip, something like that. Um, it would be unusual, though, if there are kids on board for the suspect to make a run for it, to get out of the vehicle and run. Possible, uh, but more than likely um, to leave the children behind if they're their children would be um, something we haven't seen in the past.
Yeah. Well, uh, Philip, we just got um, some information. They believe it's an eight-year-old. Now, to say that really gives us some more sense that there are kids on board. If if we're getting an, um, you know some information from the police that there's they believe one of the children's an eight-year-old, then more than likely there are children on board. Whether they're two or not, um, it seems to be that is the um, the case. We believe that to be so from what we have heard and what we've gotten from law enforcement. Uh, but to hear that just moments ago that they believe that one of the children is eight years old uh, makes us really more confident that that report is uh, factual. Yeah. Yeah. They know a lot and they've talked to somebody. You wouldn't have an age like that um, uh, from a visual from an officer, I wouldn't think. You know, I'm, I'm not an officer, so um, it'd be more like, you know, it's a young adult or a young child. Uh, now, this is interesting because there's a CHP vehicle crossing in front of that patrol car. Can we pull out a little bit, Jamie? I want to see if there's another one uh, behind. But there's the SUV. It looks like it's going to get off on Hawthorne Boulevard in Lawndale. Whether or not the CHP vehicle going by caused the suspect to get off or not, we don't know. Uh, but that's the first time in a while, Philip, where we've actually seen uh, CHP come up on the vehicle and actually follow it. No, we didn't. We Well, we saw that patrol car, uh, car go by him. Yep. Yep. Yeah, you almost even wonder if that patrol car did not know they were in pursuit of that vehicle, just maybe was making his rounds on the 405 North. Uh, CHP maybe was not getting that call out. He was on the North 405, and he, he crossed in front of him. But it didn't change the driver's uh, demeanor much or his actions as far as when he saw that vehicle, it didn't start to speed up. So we're right at the end of the 405 Northbound at Hawthorne Boulevard in Lawndale. Um, at a stoplight here, it's going to make a, a right turn to go north on Hawthorne Boulevard, a left turn to go south. Uh, we get into an area now, though, that's a little more um, a business type area. There's some restaurants on Hawthorne Boulevard. Uh, there are more more pedestrian traffic in this area than what we saw, say, in the San Pedro area earlier when he uh, got off the freeway. Look like he came under the overcrossing. He's coming south. There's the vehicle. And if he makes that turn, we're going to get right back on the 405 and head back southbound. So um, the suspect has come out of Beaumont, took the 10 freeway through the Covinas, got onto the 605 south, 91 to the 110, went down into San Pedro. Uh, from there, went across the um, uh, the bridges of Vincent Thomas and the uh, Desmond Gerald, and then headed back onto the 710 north on the 405 north, and now turned around and we're south 405. So uh, it's been going on for some time and uh, it's traveling back down towards Long Beach. Yeah, there's no rhyme or reason to this, that's for sure. We've seen it all, and uh, it's hard to say exactly why the suspect is doing what um, he is doing. Uh, there are no vehicles or patrol cars behind him, and the rate of speed has been pretty consistent now with the flow of traffic, so that certainly is a good thing. But um, it, we'll just have to follow this thing out and see where it all ends. Uh, the helicopters will not lose this vehicle. If you just joined us, the real twist here is we believe two children are on board. A one, according to law enforcement reports, they believe to be an eight-year-old. Um, and so a lot of concern. We had speeds up 
100 miles an hour on the freeway. It's some real erratic driving, but over the last 25 or 30 minutes, it, uh, driving has calmed quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, and that's the luxury of the helicopter, Philip. But they can uh, make sure they still have eyes on this suspect with two helicopters, uh, LA County Sheriff's and uh, uh, the CHP helicopter overhead. They can make sure they have eyes on this individual and they can still back off with the patrol cars because when the patrol cars were behind them and visible to the suspect, we saw a whole different scenario. We saw speeds up to 100 miles an hour. And so that is one thing that they still have eyes on them. I think they still feel comfortable that they're gonna be able to handle anything that does happen. You know, there are so many police in these different jurisdictions that uh, if anything uh, did happen, they needed assistance immediately. They could uh, radio from the helicopters and, and get the uh, patrol cars there in no time. Uh, but certainly from our perspective, uh, we're watching something that uh, with the children, that, that factor there. And here comes a little bit of a turn. And this will be interesting. Uh, we're going to be, it looks like, back now on the 110 freeway southbound, off the 405 and southbound on the 110. We've seen this in a lot of cases in the past with pursuits. A suspect will sort of go around in circles back into an area that maybe they're familiar with. We don't know that, but it has been a pattern in a lot of the pursuits we've covered in the past. Uh, we're back southbound on the 110 freeway, away from the 405, and if the suspect continues southbound, we'll head uh, right back down into that San Pedro area that we were at uh, maybe 20 minutes ago. Speeds are picking up. Yep. Yeah, moment of pause. Yeah, it gives you a moment of pause, and then all of a sudden we see the vehicle speed up once again. It was up to 90 miles an hour there just a moment ago. Uh, fortunately, we're uh, Veterans Day, and the volume is very light. I say fortunately because if a vehicle's traveling at this rate of speed and there's a lot of traffic, then we, we see the suspect swerve in and out of that traffic. Uh, that's when we've really seen some uh, horrific accidents in the past. Uh, right now, with the volume being as light as it is on the 110, there's no traffic all the way down into the uh, harbor area. But yeah, you know, th this pursuit is really somewhat um, mundane, if you will, if you don't throw the kids in. It'd be like we'd back off and we may not even stay on it uh, because we see a lot of these pursuits like this where they'll back off and they'll just let the suspect go, knowing they'll get them later or they'll get them with a helicopter. But with two children, and we believe that to be fairly confident now that we got that report that they believe one is an eight-year-old. Um, with two children on board, it changes everything. It changes uh, the way they're going to follow this, the way they're going to perceive it, and the way we look at it as well, the way we cover it as well. Because, you know, two innocent kids in there, if the suspect decides to go nuts, and we've seen that in a lot of cases, a suspect gets desperate and all of a sudden just drives as fast as they can and really think all of a sudden they're going to get away. By doing that, somebody gets hurt. And with two kids on board, we're just hoping that's not the case.
Yeah, no doubt about that. I mean, I don't know what the laws are regarding how long they're going to keep somebody in jail. I think it used to be uh, six months minimum sentence if you were involved in a pursuit. Um, whether with COVID that has changed. Okay, all right. I, I wasn't really aware of uh, the, the changes that were made there. Um, but there are going to be a lot of charges compiled against this individual. Um, if it is that man's children, then it wouldn't surprise me if they take the children away. Um, it would definitely be uh, endangering his own kids, and there would be a question whether or not this individual is uh, capable of, of caring for a child of that age. Uh, looks like we're getting off of the uh, 110 freeway now on to PCH, and um, if the suspect makes a left turn here, they'll be going eastbound. So, yeah, that looks like that was a red light that we just ran there, um, and now we're going underneath uh, the 110 freeway. Yeah, no, uh, but it was a red light as well. Unfortunately, there was nobody coming through there, and he was able to slow and look. But um, now we're on PCH, and uh, it'll be interesting to see if this makes a right turn here. Uh, I'm not sure. This Figueroa, yeah, Figueroa, which uh, basically parallels the 110 freeway. And now we're turning into a residential area. Now, this is going to get tricky, and now law enforcement has to make a decision. A lot of cases, what we'll see is a suspect make a run for it, or they go towards their own home if they're actually in an area that they know. But it's the first time we've really seen uh, the vehicle get into a surface street or into a residential area on a surface street uh, next to homes. Uh, we hope that he doesn't start driving erratically because there's going to be kids out today riding their bike, playing. Um, it can be very dangerous very quickly. It was a tight squeeze. Uh, that's possible. Yeah, that's very possible. But things will change as far as law enforcement is concerned because, you know, CHP is not going to be the lead agency any longer. I think this is going to be, Jay may help me with this. This may be LAPD's uh, uh, yeah, LAPD Harbor uh, is division here. Um, and they, for the most part, we believe that uh, LAPD at this point is just going to back off. Um, but it, it's interesting how these things change when they go into different jurisdictions. Um, CHP still has a helicopter overhead, and we're seeing the vehicle really slow here. It's hard to say if they know someone. You know, we've seen in a lot, a lot of cases in the past that uh, they'll get on the phone and talk with someone, and then they'll have that person out in the street. And they'll, you know, maybe you go to uh, talk to someone. So, oh, there we go. Somebody running across the street. It looks like somebody they possibly know. Did they just run in and, and get one of the children? All right. Well, there we go. We got at least one person getting out. We have a child. And did she take that child out of the vehicle? I didn't. I didn't see. Did she take that child out of the vehicle, or did she? Yeah. Oh, that uh, that's another woman. That's a woman with a baby, I think. Go to open open up. Yep, yep. Careful here, Jamie. Careful, careful. Okay, he's making a run for it. You're always worried when he gets out. We don't want to see someone up close being shot by officers. And that suspect did not appear that they were going to obey the officers. If he would have uh, made a, a quick move, uh, that really could have been, yeah, the officer fell. That could have been a dicey situation. Uh, they're going to get the suspect in a moment. He's going to get tired. Uh, officers are in pursuit. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, we're trying to get around that side and take a look there, Philip. Yeah. Well, I think the main thing, Philip, the kids are safe. Nobody was hurt. Uh, the suspect will be taken into custody. There was a real concern on, yeah, we got a lot of people yelling at me. Probably right behind the tree. Yeah, I believe that's gonna be him there. Okay, yeah, the, the suspect is in custody. And you know, it's, it's yeah, it, it's tough for officers when they follow a suspect on foot like that and they don't know if he's armed or not so we just picked up a pretty good echo for me so it's going to be difficult for me to respond to you the ifb just went into an echo but i think the main thing is philip um everybody's okay the suspect's in custody we don't think anyone was hurt um in the uh, pursuit itself and um the kids are fine so that's the main the main thing we were so concerned about Yeah. Yeah, obviously he knows he's in a lot of trouble now. This is all over and he seemed to have his uh, senses with him when he was driving, but once he got out, he's gotta be exhausted when he ran. And you know, my first concern was when they boxed him in, when he got out of that vehicle, uh, they had their guns drawn. If he was to reach into his waistband or go for something, you know, boy, we see uh, shootings occur. Fortunately, that didn't happen here. It looks like family members, everybody's upset here. Uh, but the kids are okay. We saw that. It was amazing. It looks like it was a woman in the back seat, right, with an infant probably. It looks like a little baby seat, if I'm not mistaken, Philip. open up for a moment and we'll see where the vehicle is and uh, well we're kind of hidden and we got behind it yeah it's tough for us to really move there's so many helicopters up here we sort of stay put to stay safe um, once it comes to a stop uh, law enforcement and everything else out here it makes it difficult to move but um, yeah more than likely um, law enforcement is going to make sure the children are all right uh, they may get someone, they may have paramedics come and make sure that they're okay. They may be upset. I mean, there are all sorts of uh, uh, problems that may arise, so they're going to want to make sure, take the welfare of the, the kids first. Uh, but the suspects in custody, no one was hurt. This had the potential to end badly, and it didn't, so we're happy about that. ended uh, right at the end of the show, so nobody got hurt, so that's good. Why don't we go around and see if we can get the vehicle, see where the kids are. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, well, we get some time off. Might have to go a little further north, I think. You can continue west, but then you'll have to go north, I think, to get to the, uh, we want to try and get where the kids were. Yeah, it was right there, Jamie, right in front. Maybe they moved it, they moved that a uh, little bit. 
Uh, right in the center of your screen almost. I think it was right in front. I think that's uh, the bottom of your screen is where the uh, SUV is. Is that it right there? Oh, was it? Okay, we'll down a little further. There we go. Yeah, that's right, guys. My patrol car right here. 